Oh, share it. Are they still? Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining. We just um, waiting for Travis. Hi. Hi, good morning. Is that you, Travis? It is me. How are you doing? Oh, Mr. Awesome. I'm <laughs> just a bit confused. <laughs> How are you doing? Fine and you? I'm good, thank you. Cool, cool. Um, sure, I've been jumping around between meetings to meetings, but I'm very exciting about, uh, excited about your training. So where do we start? Um, let's give it about five more minutes or three minutes or so. People are still joining. Okay. But what I've done in the meantime, I've made you whole so that you can um, share your presentation. Okay, great. Um, I just want to... Which hotel do you think I should start with? Um, Fahrenheit or Marius? Let me start with the fire nice, yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you.
Can you all see my screen? Can I just check if everybody can see the Proto Telfar on our screen? No. Not okay. No, no. Not at all. Apologies about that. We're just doing something with Ange. So you can't hear. Cool. Let me just see if we what can about now? now we can see. Thank you. What? Okay. Welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining today's um training um session. Um we have Travis from um Protea um or Marriott, and he's gonna be doing training on uh, Protea um fine eyes. Um there we go. You can um start, Travis. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So I am fully aware of everybody's time and uh, I know that it is a leisure based um, training and it's actually in great time because we are um, really pushing a lot into the leisure market at the moment. Um, so yeah, let's start with uh, Fire and Ice. Now consider we've actually got three properties in uh, the Melrose Arch. Today I'll just be going through Proti Hotel Fire and Ice uh, and the Marriott Hotel as well. But we've also got the African Pride, which will be opening on the 9th of May. We are super, super excited. Uh, it attracts a completely different guest. Um, but what you're looking at now, this is uh, the Proteo Hotel Fire and Ice. And I want to bring reference to this little area here just in a moment, um, because there's going to be quite a lot of changes at the property. But uh, firstly, it's a 193 bedroom hotel. Uh, the, the, the hotel is confidently unique. Um, and all the Proteo Hotel Fire and Ices are, share that same um, uh, brand where they, um, every single one you check into will have a little bit of a different uh, style. Um, the person that we generally attract are quite um, young, you know, like maybe late 30s, um, and they're uh, very, very hip and barbie. Although we do have quite a lot of uh, series that uh, um, comes through, which is um, they're actually in their 60s. So the hotel uh, kind of is well positioned amongst all markets. Um, if I go into just the next screen, this is kind of um, what the hotel, what our brand lives by. Um, so firstly, it's urban. And it's in a, the reason why we say urban, it's just because it's in such a fantastic location. It's situated in the vibrant Melrose Arch precinct, and it's actually a city within a city. I'm sure most of you are aware of, of Melrose Arch and what it does, but um, I, in my opinion, it's one of the safest places in Johannesburg. 
and uh, it offers a bit of luxury, a bit of convenience, and everything's almost like right on your doorstep, right? So you've got this these 100 retail shops and 20 restaurants and bars. Um, I've tried all of them, they're awesome. And um, But it's all secluded in this little safe environment where we can literally lock up the gates if there's anything uh, concerning and you can walk the streets at night. Which is also great is it's got um, access to major freeways. So if you need to connect to the CBD or, or, or Tambo or even just get out, um, jump on the highway and go uh, and do some touring, uh, it's, it's the ease of access is really, really great. Um, the experiential part of the hotel, well, it's just, um, firstly, the property for us, it's, we, we like to say it's forever young, you know, so the staff, when you arrive, they're going to be in, in black shirts and blue jeans um, on a Friday, I'm allowed to wear sneakers as well. Um, but it's this real energetic vibe. It's this cool city life. Um, everybody's very loud and very proud of what they do. So when you come in, they're going to go, hi, welcome to Fire and Ice. You know, it's like this, it's very enthusiastic and bubbly. Um, and then the experiential part also lends itself into the whole building and the food and the, the, those aspects as well. And then um, the edgy part is this beautiful old Hollywood glamour. So you'll see James, pictures of James Dean and uh, pictures of uh, some really, really notable actors from, from uh, back in the day. Um, we've got these beautiful um, chandeliers that are pretty much all over the property. It's real bold, sexy, and sleek. Um, very dramatic color theme. Um, if we um, look into, uh, sorry, I'm skipping on the wrong slides here. Um, if we look into our main reception, um, uh, you can see this, uh, this beautiful piano, um, uh, not a piano keyboard staircase, uh, it's very attractive. On the left of the picture where these roses are is actually our front uh, office check-in. And then to the right, you've got this lobby lounge. All your buses actually can stop right outside the property. So ease of access is really, really convenient because people just literally get off the bus and they walk straight into the hotel. Um, and you can see it's crazy wallpaper. Um, can you see my cursor on the screen? I hope so. Well, this is a really long chair. You actually, this is a chair that goes all the way to the, the second floor, but it's this um, real fun, funky, fresh um, feeling about the hotel and all the staff have got that same feeling. So when you walk in, it's just this vibrant piece of energy. Um, just to the right uh, of the screen is our lobby lounge. So we do can offer group check-in as well. Um, we do have, uh, like I said, quite a bit of series at the moment. So we'll set up a, a check-in desk and they can all arrive. We can do welcome drinks for them. And then it actually goes into a lounge. Um, and I've brought attention to um, the beginning of the slide. Sorry, I'm nipping across. So you'd arrive through this, this door on the right-hand side. And then you come into this lounge. Now, this lounge is actually going to become a uh, fire and ice fast food takeaway burger and milkshake bar very, very soon, where you can literally, um, I mean, welcome, imagine having a welcome drink that's a milkshake. I can't wait. Um, but at the same time, we can have passers by us come through and they grabbing burgers and grabbing milkshakes and sitting in the lounge um, while you've got your group checking. And it's just, it's going to work really, really, really nicely. Um, I'm going to skip to this slide now. Um, so now, Proteo Hotel, Fire and House, right in the middle. Uh, you've got the Marriott Hotel on the right, and then you've got African Pride just down the strip. And this street uh, down the middle of uh, Melrose Arch is now actually completely closed off. Um, no traffic can go through there. And in the not too distant future, they'll be closing off more streets. And what it does uh, for the precinct is, I mean, a lot of Restaurants have now opened, they've, they've gathered more floor space so that all these tables and chairs are now in the road. Um, it allows you to walk in, the, walk in the street. It's like a typical high street from Europe. Um, and it's just this, again, um, real safe, connected um, area. And it feels a little bit more like a European concept. And obviously, Melrose Arch is this first smart city. So we've got ultra high speed um, internet as well as. Um, generators that power up the whole grid. So when there's load shedding, Melrose Arch doesn't go offline, which is amazing. Um, so sorry for jumping around a little bit. Into our rooms. So we've got 193 bedrooms. If there's any questions, do you guys just raise your hands or how does it work? 
I'll get back to that. Cool. Um, it's at the cool. end of um, at the end it's of the presentation. Good. Okay, brilliant. Perfect. Okay, so, so we've got 193 bedrooms. Uh, of the 193 bedrooms, we've got three suites, and the, the suites are almost triple the size of a standard room. Um, so they're really, really large, and they're great for families. Um, we do have a, quite a few interconnecting rooms as well. Uh, but if you are, if you've got a, a family traveling, it's always best to try and put them in a suite. Um, we've also got four universally accessible rooms. Uh, so if you do have any disabled guests, we're more than welcome to welcome them. Um, and then obviously you've got all your standards in the room. So a Marriott uh, brand standard is to have uh, complimentary bottled water delivered every single day. Uh, we've got 24 hour room service. You've got uh, satellite television, complimentary Wi-Fi you know, laundry services, valet parking, business center, there's a safe in the room. Um, and if you needed to, there is a little workspace as well. Um, you can also see there's a, a curtain that draws across, that would be for your shower, and then you've got a separate toilet as well, but obviously tea, coffee making facilities and everything that you need. And um, this brings back into the whole experiential side of the property, um, where, our guest relations team, they will try their best to find out anything that's absolutely happening about your traveler that's coming through. Um, to give you some examples, we've, um, we recently had a guest that stayed with us five years ago. And um, on, on his uh, booking profile, it said he proposed his uh, proposal for his proposal. That was, that was all we had um, from five years ago. And it was him and his wife, we actually put them in the exact same room that they traveled in five years ago. And we said, um, we think you proposed here. We, um, and the, we wrote a very, very nice uh, note. We put a bottle of wine and we put some chocolates in their room. And it was like, they were blown away because we remembered something that happened five years ago. Um, and that's the, the real uh, winning, uh, well, that's our big win for the property. We, we really deep dive the guest experience and make sure that we're going over the top for everything that's happening. So along with that whole experiential, everybody being loud and vibrant and ener uh, energetic, we bring that down to the guest level where we want to find out what they're doing, what's the purpose of travel, how they, what, what's going to delight and excite. Um, sure, I get carried away. Sorry about that. Um, Onto our twin bedded rooms. Um, so we, out of the 193 bedrooms, we can offer 190 king bedded rooms, or we can offer 90 twin bedded rooms and 100 king bedded rooms. And what that means is uh, 90 of our king bedded rooms actually are zip beds, um, where we can quickly turn around and offer you more twins if you needed to. Um, uh, so if you've got groups that are traveling, I mean, from a leisure perspective, you do have quite a, you do get the request for twins. If you suddenly needed an extra twin or two, we can just literally unzip the bed, set up the room, and we're good to go. Um, and then, uh, I mean, just uh, some things I just missed out. Um, earlier, we've obviously got your um, mini bars, um, shaving makeup mirrors, uh, USB plugs, um, and uh, all, all the necessary. Um, into our dining facilities. So this is our signature restaurant in the hotel. Um, it offers a free, uh, a full English, not free breakfast, a full English uh, buffet breakfast. And um, what's very, very exciting, um, and the Fire and Ice brand is actually known for it, is to have these flavorful burgers, but these milkshakes that are absolutely to, to, to die for. Um, we've actually got 37 different flavors of milkshakes. And what we find is quite a lot of people will just drop in from the over the weekend and just come through and dine with us. Um, or we'll actually use the burgers and the milkshakes as an experience for, for guests that are coming through or, or are with us for a few nights. So if you could imagine having a, um, uh, a group with us or a few leisure travelers and we set it up where before they depart on one of the evenings, they have burgers or drinks. Um, you know, from a kid's perspective, the, the choosing of the milkshakes uh, becomes really, really fun. Um, and what is great is this restaurant uh, flows out onto the bar, but also flows out onto our pool area as well. Um, I go straight on to the next one. So you can get an idea of the burgers. We've got also a range of menus. So to let you know, the hotel's only just been reopened two months. So um, and I can say probably in the next two weeks, we'll have a fully 
a, a back to a full service property where there's a few things we're still not 100% doing. Like we don't have all the burgers available. We don't have all the milkshakes available, but very, very soon we will. But here you get an idea of what the, the food does look like. Um, this is our bar area. So this is my office on a Thursday. Um, it's, it's, it's great where, I mean, 193 bedrooms, it doesn't look like a massive bar, but we actually can service probably about 150 people in this area. And what is amazing is it actually walks straight out into um, our open area pool deck, which I'll show you in a moment. What we do find quite often with guests, or specifically um, overseas guests, is a lot of people will go out shopping for the day, um, particularly the ladies, and then in the evening, you'll find everybody kind of gathers at the bar before they go out for a dinner or, or something like that. And the Melrose Arch Precinct really does allow that. Um, cool. This is the outside section I was talking about. So you can see all the doors on the right-hand side. Um, those all open up. Um, so for morning breakfasts, we actually have this really nice outdoor indoor setting. And then in the evening, um, we can open this up as well. And we can have a, a restaurant. Uh, so your, your open uh, air and closed uh, restaurants in the evening as well. We can also, if you wanted to, if you had a group of travelers coming through, um, book a, a separate area for them outside where they can actually just enjoy um, being in South Africa. And, you know, maybe we can put a bra menu together for them or something like that. Um, and then uh, what this looks out one to is actually our pool. So um, you can see how all these doors are now open. That sort of flows into the restaurant and that goes into the bar as well. Um, and then you've got these, you've got some nice garden space and obviously the pool as well, um, where and it's really, really convenient. It's nice and quiet. You actually don't realize you're in the, the, the center of Joburg when you are here. Um, and it's really cool where you can actually just kind of sit, sit down, relax, sip on a cocktail, have a spritzer, enjoy some of the sun, the Johannesburg sun. And then uh, if you look at the buildings, you've got pool facing and you've got city facing rooms. We don't have specific rates on uh, facing views. So um, when you're booking a hotel and it's not necessarily you know, you're going to pay more for a pool facing, but it is our favorite view at the moment. Um, I think once more development takes place in Melrose Arch and our city facing ones will also become very, really exciting. And then just lastly, we've got this um, little gym in the property. And uh, it's quite convenient where you've got um, a number of free weights, you've got your um, cardiovascular, um, I mean, your treadmills, and your um, rowing machine, and your bicycle. And uh, this looks out onto the garden as well. So it's, it's, it's a, a, a quite a tranquil place to actually just go do some, some gardening. Um, and then uh, that would be fire and ice in its hotel uh, in, in all its glory at the moment. Um, let's just give you an idea of one of the milkshakes. Mm. And uh, so it's not a massive property, but the value proposition that it has behind it is absolutely amazing from an experiential point of view and from a uh, location point of view. Awesome. Any questions on the fire and ice? Um, I've got one question. Um, yes. First of all, beautiful presentation and love the property and i've been there quite a few times even party oh. there so i just wanted to find out do you still have those um dj sessions um i think it's on a thursday and on a sunday um outside by the pool area yeah and this this area yeah so um yes we so we the the area this garden area um is shared with some residential um apartments so while we can uh so look firstly we haven't done it in a long time obviously there was uh, this virus mm -hmm. that went around and since we've reopened we've obviously just been building occupancy so that we can uh, start doing a little bit more entertainment but what we'll probably find is that instead of having these dj sessions at Janet pool we'll probably put them in the lobby lounge where it's actually street facing and there's um, a little bit more excitement um mm -hmm. With the residential apartments that we have here, uh, we have to tone it down quite early um, by like 8, 8 p.m. And we find, you know, like a lot of people only get there at 8, 8 p.m., you know? So, mm. um, so no, we haven't done it yet. It is on the, the drawing board to say we need to put some, you know, I know Proto Hotel um, Fire and Ice in Menlin 
they do some mm. awesome DJ nights. Um, it's yes. actually quite envious. But uh, yeah, it is on the drawing board. Uh, we just need to find out how we do it. But uh, we'll let you know when, when we when we do. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that. Um, anybody? Does anyone have a question for Travis? I think everyone is just blown away. They don't have any questions as yet. Um, no, you've answered everything, yeah. Okay, then let me go into um, the. Um, let's close this one off, sorry. And then let me go into Marriott quick. So these two properties are completely different. I mean, to give you an example, I have to. Are you still there? I'm still here. Cool. You were saying something about the two properties? Yeah, so can you see my screen now? Um, not yet. Now you can. There we go, now I can, thank you. Okay, so what is, what is completely, um, uh, so I mean, you, you can imagine now you're in the Mel Resort, you've got, you've got the, the four star fun energetic um, Proto Hotel and everybody's running around in jeans and you know, like having a lot of fun and, um it's a really hip and happening hotel and then right across the road you've got um this majestic five-star um real affluent uh property um and then just down the strip you've got uh african pride which is a uh, more leisure boutique um complete, completely different type of guest uh property as well uh, why i share that with you is because um We've got a very good tiered approach at the moment where um, we actually will tier rates to your guests or to yourselves, uh, uh, where we, we start at entry level with the fire and ice, and then we tier up all the way to the Marriott. Um, and we've really got something for everybody. And why I get excited about that as well is um, we, it's all one management team. So uh, we've got one sales team that manages the entire cluster. We've got one HR team, one RT team, one uh, food and beverage team, uh, one cluster general manager. And um, you know what? Why I share that with you is you can imagine being having a group at the fire and ice, but having a, a few guests come through to Archer that night. Um, maybe having or, or having a, a group stay at the Marriott, but they. One night they go to Archer, one night they have milkshakes at Fire and Ice, one morning they're having champagne breakfast at African Prime. You know, so um, you can really custom make your hotel experience uh, or the guest experience just within the hotels. Um, and that's before they've even gone out to the precinct to experience what the precinct's like. Or, so, you know, there's, there's various different options that we can work with a, with a, a, a team. So um, this is my my little baby though, well, it's 400 bedrooms, but uh, so it's essentially two hotels in one. Um, the first five floors are the Johannesburg Marriott Hotel Melrose Arch, and then the top three floors are actually the Marriott Executive Apartments. Um, now the, the Executive Apartments, I won't get into too much detail here, but what I will share with you is if we do have any Marriott Bonvoy loyalty members, um, they get, uh, depending on their status, they get an upgraded to suites. Now, if we're full on our suites, we are um, actually upgrade them into um, a one bedroom apartment. It's a very similar floor space. Um, and uh, it's just a great value add to have where we've got these additional apartments that we can offer more upgrades than we, we, we should do usually. All right, so if you look at the bottom of the screen, this is Archer Barn Eatery. That's my office on a Friday. Um, if you drive up past the hotel, it's this beautiful Port Cashier. You can get some really big buses in there. Um, we actually host uh, one or two airline crews um, and they come through with a, a big 72 seater. So you could see the size of bus that we can get in there quite easily. Um, on the other side of the Port Cashier is another restaurant called Keystone, which I'll get into in a moment. But again, such easy access um, within the whole uh, Melrose Arch. Um, I've already shared this with you, so I'm gonna skip through that at the moment. Let's go straight into our bedrooms. So the bedrooms are 36 square meters. Um, we've got 306 uh, hotel rooms, of which 205 are king bedded guest rooms. So what you're looking at now. Um, and the room really just does lend itself to um, this new age of hotel. 
Uh, to give you an example, we um, when your guest checks in downstairs, uh, as soon as the key card is cut, the room actually powers up. So your air conditioning will start up, your TV will start up. Um, it pretty much breathes this life into the room. When your guest checks out, everything powers down. Um, and why that happens is because uh, we want to leave a better carbon footprint as a hotel um, as well. And we find a lot of our clients really appreciate that. Um, just looking at the room though, uh, it's got a nice mix of vinyl flooring and carpeting. Uh, we took the top five complaints um, that most guests would, would make in a hotel and we actually implemented them in the rooms. So you'll find a plug next to the mirror, that was my idea. Um, you'll find plug points and USB charging stations next to the bed, but also above the table level. So you're not digging in, uh, around anywhere. Um, and then uh, Obviously, just it's a it's a restorative room, so it's a nice place to relax and unwind, but a um, also a, a multifunctional room for working as well if you needed to. I know your guests wouldn't be doing that. Um, we've got just short of fifty interleading options, and the inter all the interleading options are uh, from a king bed into a double uh, bedded room. What you can't see in the picture is all the rooms have got fifty five inch LED screens, uh, TVs. Um, and they all smart TV. So what will happen is when your guests arrive, most people have smart devices now and uh, they'll actually pair their device with the TV. And then from there, they can literally do whatever they want. Satellite television, um, you've got Netflix, you can push content from your phone to the TV if you want to. You can order in-room dining from the TV. It's just super seamless and easy. Um, all the rooms have got coffee tea making facilities as well as Nespresso machines. Shaving, makeup mirrors, mini bar safes. Um, uh, there's iron and ironing boards in all the rooms as well. We've got USB charging stations almost everywhere. Um, and uh, we've also got, uh, not in the rooms, but if you needed to, we've got international plugs as well, which we can offer for guests. Um, going into our. Uh, double double rooms. Um, so we've got 68 double double rooms and these are why we call them double doubles is because it's two king bedded rooms. Um, very similar to, our, uh, sorry, they've, they've got two double beds in it, um, but very similar to the king bedded rooms in terms of this, the, this space in the room um, and obviously all the facilities we have as well. And then uh, on to our junior suites. So we've got 10 junior suites, and this is a double volume um, bedroom. So this goes up to 72 square meters. And what is really nice about this is it's got a separate living space. So a separate living space and bedroom, as well as a guest bathroom. Um, and then it's also got two interleading options. So one side of the suite has got a king bedded room, and the other side of the, the suite has got a um, double double. Um, so I'm seeing the chats coming through. I'm trying to stay on top of them. Um, one thing we also do is if anybody's book, uh, booked a suite, they um, get an extra. Sorry, Travis. Yeah. Um, you can answer that after the presentation. No, they, I think they just said mind blowing, which is quite cool. <laughs> True. I'm going to comment on it, but uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. So whenever anybody's booked a suite, uh, and look, our suites are already sought after, we do have a little welcome amenity in them. Um, we make sure that all of our guests that have booked in the suites get the absolute uh, epitome of service. Um, one thing I haven't shared with you is um, uh, in the Marriott reception, we've got this um, uh, these, these gentlemen that wear red, um, red suits um, or red jackets, and they are... Um, Anything that needs to happen within the property, they are your guys that go, they go to. We've got one in banqueting and one in reception. And if you need anything, you just literally go to the red coats and they, they're the they're epitome of service. They'll, make, they'll go the extra mile and make sure things happen. Um, we had a guest a couple of weeks ago that um, he wanted to propose to his girlfriend. So he just went to this guy and he's like, hey, I need this, I need this, I need this. And they sorted everything out. We actually, we actually made a dinner for them in their bedroom, in their, in their suite for them, where the chef came up and, you know, Made it a bit fancy, which was quite cool. Um, on to our restaurants. So um, this would be your Keystone restaurant. A, um, it's a 200-seater uh, restaurant. And uh, what is great about it is it actually doubles up as two venues. So in the morning, it's a 200-seater breakfast room. And in the evening, we've got this, 
this door that actually opens and closes shut. Um, the door then um, separates the restaurant and it looks like a big wall. So you actually move this wall across um, and then it becomes a 60 seater restaurant. So in the, the, for late lunch and early dinners um, or even late dinners, um, the size of the restaurant uh, allows us to attract a bit more guests because they don't, most guests don't want to sit in a big restaurant by themselves. Um, and what we find is a lot more guests come into this little space and then we fill up small spaces at a time. But what really happens is we compete with the restaurants and the precinct. Um, but our chef's really got a, a lot of great dishes here. He's, he's opened about nine properties himself. If I can make any suggestions, if you do like butter chicken, he does an absolutely amazing dish. But um, you can get deep fried oysters, you can get um, bone marrow. Um, there's a bone marrow dish where you actually eat bone marrow. Uh, I was a bit freaked out about it at first, but it actually tastes so, so nice. Um, and we also started doing this uh, real family sharing option. So we've got these nice big dining room tables. Um, and when you've got like a, an eight seater or a 10 seater, um, we don't even, you don't even necessarily have to order off the menu. You can just like ask the chef to kind of create a few family options and you've got like roast chicken and you've got, it's like real wholesome Sunday afternoon food. Um, so that's, uh, that's really, really awesome. Um, onto the Archibald Eatery. So this is on the corner of the property um, and such a fun venue. So the whole of the Marriott property is branded Marriott. We've got brand standards that we need to make sure that we abide by. And then uh, in the Archer, it's kind of like, you can do whatever you like. Um, even the, the waiters, I mean, the waiters in the bomb and they have got these like dreadlocks and tattoos and they wear rolled up sleeves. You know, they're like real hardy. Um, throwing bottles around i actually applied for the position i didn't get it it was quite disappointing anyway um but in the morning it's a coffee shop and uh, you can get a grab and go breakfast and we've actually got a deaf barista so he'll teach you sign language and how to order a cappuccino and he, he's also so attentive to guests so he gets to know our guests over time um and he'll see you coming a mile away and he'll already get your, your your coffee ready for you um and then in the afternoon it becomes a real Oh, um, where we do live entertainment um, on a Thursday and Friday. So if you, you're missing the DJ nights at Farnas, I'd suggest you come through here on a Thursday and Friday. It's super, super cool. We actually had um, one of the guys that came second in Idols a couple of, I think it was a year ago or two years ago. Um, he was performing here the other night. Um, mm. Yeah, it was quite cool. I mean, I tried to sing with him, but he wouldn't let me. Um, <laughs> But it's uh, the first ingredient in this this place uh, in, in Archie is actually the, the alcohol. Um, so we focus on um, a lot of cocktails. We don't have a large variety, but we make sure that the, the delivery and the, the look of the cocktail is absolutely perfect. Um, and then the second ingredient in this space is the food. And it's the it's a tapas restaurant. So you've got this like bowl sharing food, um, but real um, again, working with the sustainable cooking model and um, and also the chef has come, this, remember the chef looks after all the properties. So we've, we've really changed the menus around. So you won't get the summing at Archer that you would get at Fire and Ice, for example. Um, but really, really popular venue. And all these doors actually open up into the street. Uh, we've got acoustic ceilings. So in the morning, you can hear some nice music coming out of here. And then into the late afternoon, it becomes a real fun bar. Um, uh, our sommelier station. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's a wine library. Um, I took my wife around the hotel the one time and she now wants one of these in her house. It's the problem. Um, but um, Marriott actually had such humble beginnings um, back in 1906 when we first um, started. We actually started as a, a small nine seater restaurant. Um, we were never a hotel group, we were a restaurant group. Um, and this nine seater restaurant, only through the, the relationship with suppliers that it grow into an 18 seater, 30 seater, eventually that 30 seater was put into a, a hotel and the owners then learned, okay, hold on, I can now, um, we can learn how to be a hotel. And that's when the hotel empire, empire grew. Um, for what we want to do here is you'll actually walk past the wine library and you'll see some wines that are completely off the beaten track. You've never seen them before. And these are from vineyards across South Africa that don't have a large footprint. They don't have a huge production line, um, but they're growing their brand within our brand. So where Marriott got its success, 
100 years ago, we are in that position now where we can offer that same to our suppliers. Um, for in-house guests, particularly our um, loyalty members, we'll do a wine tasting every other Friday. Um, and normally we we share that with a, like a, a tea station or a, a cold meats, um, and then we pair wines depending on what food is available. Um, actually, we pair the food depending on what wines are available. Um, uh, but it's also a very very um, exciting uh, uh, play on um, the the guest experience, um, just making sure everything runs super smooth, super smoothly, and then. Um, I should have probably started here, but this is what our reception looks like. So um, we've got four meeting, uh, well, you've got all these little um, seating pods all over the place. Um, and within the cupboards, uh, within these little shelves, if you can't see my cursor, you've got little USB charging devices and plug-in devices and complimentary Wi-Fi. And it's just this really large open space where uh, I mean, we uh, for a couple of days in a row, we've been running at 100% occupancy and we've got lots of guests checking in and out and and you don't feel like there's a lot of people there. It's just such a nice large space um, that you, you actually kind of get lost in it. Um, and what we find is a lot of guests will come down, they'll kind of gather in the lobby before they go out for the day, they'll have a cup of coffee or they'll, they'll stop here after breakfast. Um, it really, really works out nicely. And then if you look at the color scheme of the property, Everything's very natural. Um, we've got a lot of earthy elements here, and uh, it's actually it subconsciously brings your guest um, into a like more relaxed state of mind. Um, I know I sound like I'm brainwashing you, but that is the truth. Um, and then just off reception, we've got an M Club lounge. So um, our M Club lounge, uh, if you've got a Marriott Bonvoy loyalty member uh, of platinum uh, status or above. They get complimentary access into this lounge and you will find if you've got regular travelers they are they do have a marriott bonvoy status and what that means is in this space you get complimentary breakfast every morning there's also various food and beverage um, options throughout the day we do like a little happy hour um, uh, around 5 6 pm where we our general manager myself and maybe our chef will go through there and we'll just interact with some of the guests and serve canapes and have a glass of wine um, and uh, and similarly, if anything, if there's any activations happening across the, the um, property, we actually invite our, our loyalty guests to those activations as well. So if we're having a wine tasting or if there's a special entertainer or if, or if, or if we're trying a new menu in the Keystone, we'll bring those loyalty guests uh, through. And then this is our pool. It's kind of cool. Um, so firstly, um, the bottom left corner if you can't see my cursor there's a little um uh, pool bar and really all that does is service this this area um but you can get a burger you can get a um, toasted sandwich um you can order a spritzer beer soft drink um the pool is heated but it's not super warm like warm bars it's literally just to take the chill off the pool um and um th these this big glass window at the bottom is actually all gymnasium um, but once you're in this area as well, similar to the fire and ice, you, you don't realize that you're in the middle of Joburg. It's so tranquil and, and chilled. Um, and we find it's actually one of our busiest spots at the moment. Um, and this is the gym. So on the right hand side of the picture, these glass windows actually look out onto the pool area. Um, but it's, it's, it's a massive gym. We've got so, so, much, um, so much machinery in here. It's actually unbelievable. It's, op it's open 24 hours. Um, but you can see we've got treadmills, run growing machines, bicycles, free weights. There's pretty much you can do a full gym workout here. Um, one thing we haven't put in place at the gym since we've reopened and consider now the hotel's running at uh, where well, it's running where we wanted it to be in 2020. Um, but one thing we haven't added is actually having a, a personal trainer in the space. And the idea is that eventually we'll have a personal trainer on the payroll to say, any of your guests coming in, hey, can I help you with this? Can you do this? You know, that type of thing. So even if you are traveling, you've still got that, that advice. And that's it. That's all for me. Ta-da. Oh, wow. Well, thank you uh, once again, um, Travis. Um, just to go back a bit, um, the question again, um, how many double-double rooms do you have on the property? Uh, we've got 68 on this property. 
Okay, awesome. Lovely hotel. Um, I love the, the settings and the furnishing. Everything looks really great. Um, actually, I think we were there with Angela um, two, three weeks ago. It looks yeah. really, really stunning. Yeah, I like to call it home. Um, yeah, yeah. No, look, and you know, uh, to, to give you a small success story, uh, this hotel opened on the 1st of March, 2020. Um, and by the 25th of March, we had to close because of COVID, right? So it was the, the quickest hotel opening and closing in married history. Um, mm -hmm. Furthermore, um, since we've reopened, uh, we've actually been able to put a lot uh, more, more uh, focus on the whole guest experience. Um, so you'll find that, I mean, guest experience to us across the whole precinct is, is really critical. At Fire and Ash, you're going to get um, people that are very attentive to your needs, making sure that um, uh, you don't miss anything and that there's this mm -hmm. constant um, engagement with guests. Where at Marriott, um, we kind of, we, we step back, but we anticipate the needs more. So we'll do a lot more traveler profiling to find out exactly what they, where they've been, what other properties they've stayed in, where we can pull guest profile information, and we'll make things happen without them knowing that we're making things happen so the two two properties are very very different um mm. but again you know like let's do something in the precinct where you've got a group traveling and they're staying at marriott or they're staying at fine house but we're doing something mm -hmm. at the property. yeah okay awesome and then um how is your um easter weekend looking like in terms of availability just to share with our agents um are you still okay? Are you full? Do you still have um, availability? I want to say we are, we still got availability. Um, mm -hmm. So we are still, I just want to check exactly when it is. It's um, the 15th, right? Yes. Um, we still have availability. You know, what, so it's so funny that you asked that because last year we found um, that um, because of COVID, uh, nobody really traveled last year. We actually found that um, everybody within the city came to the, the hotel. So, I mean, we bumped into guests that lived two Ks away and they were like, hey, there's my house. Um, I'm here for the weekend because I just want to get out, you know? Yeah. Um, whereas this year, um, I think South Africans have finally got that whole, you know, COVID's over, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Let's go to let's go. Let's 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 uh, go on holiday. Um, yeah. So we are seeing we're not seeing as high demand um, in April, uh, specifically the two short weeks from a leisure perspective, um, but also the lead time we find is incredibly short at the moment. So uh, if you ask me that question today, I'm going to say, yeah, please send us every okay. booking you've got. Um, but right. in a week time, we might be going whole. Oh, we fully booked. Um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, look. Um, but we're not talking about a week, so send me every booking you got. Okay, awesome. They're listening, so now they know. Cool. <laughs> and thank you once again. Um, before I let you go, I just want to ask one more time, does anyone have any questions for Travis? Nothing? Anyone? Yeah, it seems me? like you've covered everything. Cool. Well, look, it's so been a pleasure chatting you. to you all. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting all of you. And um, should you need anything, just please reach out. Um, you've got my email address. Um, I'm happy to assist. We've got a team of people waiting to make some bookings for you. Um, and yeah, I saw somebody's comments saying it would be great to have a site inspection. Let me know. Um, it would be great to take, you know, maybe two or three groups around on the day, do some proper product training. But maybe nice. what you can do is uh, reserve that for when Fire and Ice is open so you can get a full idea of what the precinct does. Okay, awesome. With that said, thank you so much again, Travis, for your time. No problem. Stunning properties and hope to get more bookings um, for you guys. So thank awesome. you, thank you to everyone. Have yourselves a wonderful day further and we'll chat soon again. Cool. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Trav. Bye.